Hello, and welcome to episode 133 of the Arena Regulars podcast. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we're source for drunken Magic the Gathering Arena content. That's right. Just a couple of dudes drinking some wildly irregular <laughs> beers and talking about Magic the Gathering. In particular, the online client MTG Arena. Yep, and uh, we are getting into our happy hour episode for Wilds of Eldraine. As the Lost Caverns of Ixalan is coming into our lives, we are saying goodbye to Wilds of Eldraine. So we have to give it a happy hour. But first, each episode we drink a beer, we rate it on a scale from bronze to mythic, uh, see how it stacks up against the beers we've tasted in the past. So with that, Jeff, what's on tap? Okay, so we have this uh, <laughs> monstrosity. It is called uh, Velvet Bubble Lord. You can see from this can already. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. It's a blueberry sour. It's flying monkeys. This is what they do. They make the weird stuff. Um, and so, you know, maybe since you seemed to know what some of these things were, I'll let you read the description that just sums oh. up how this beer tastes. Ah, oh, geez. Oh, gosh. It's so <laughs> long and weird. Um, it says, uh, fresh blueberry puree and citrus lemon verbenum flow with velvety bubbles in fruity magenta buoyancy with tart gamay quips and tannic pinot noir repartee closing with acidic floral whispers. Um there you go. I don't you guys at home can experience that because it just makes it super clear how the beer's going to taste. Yeah, totally. All those things make super sense to me. And there's a lot yeah. of beer buzzwords in there, not anything yeah. to do with wine or, uh, I don't know, conversations or I don't know. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very confusing. Um, Jeff, I'm so surprised that you picked this beer for us. It doesn't hey, seem like a, a beer you would pick. It is incredibly surprising, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So surprising that obviously I picked this. Uh, it's a blueberry sour. Anytime there's a beer that says blueberry in it, I tend to want to try it because I do like blueberries and Jeff hates them. So that's also no, sorry. Jeff does not hate blueberries. Jeff hates blueberry beers or beers that are purple for the most part. I haven't had one that really wowed me. Yeah, I I do like blueberries, but this is getting to my roots. I used to bring purple beers all of the time. So everyone's yes, well, we got to. We got to do another purple beer. I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, it's tradition. Also, for the Wilds of Eldraine Happy Hour, of course, we have the Wicked Slumber, which is the purple mist that comes in and is animating our nights and different things. So, of course, we have to drink something purple. Yeah. See, it makes sense. Uh, anyway, Jeff. I, I know when you picked this up, so I you know whether that that story. All right, well, we may or may not have had this in the fridge for a long time, but it's time for it. So, <laughs> so let's crack it open. Let's do it. Here we go. All right. So, all right, not too purple. All right. Jeff, yeah, this, is, this is more. It's a blush. It's more of a pink. Yeah, this is, this is pink, I would say. Okay, it's closer to what you would normally want, but. Kind of looks like a sparkling rosé. Yeah, that would make sense with uh, I'm not uh, that's super pumped on. Oh, I love sparkling rose, it's delicious. Okay, Oof, so good. Um, though I like lots of wine, um, I know I like wine more than you, but anyway, uh, we do have some magic news. I mentioned earlier the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Uh, is coming out soon. So the previews are finishing up um, in just a couple days. And so everything should be out on Friday. Um, which is uh, exciting. But we will be talking more about that next week because, of course, this week has nothing to do with Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Um, if you want more stuff like that, wait till next week or literally everyone else is talking about it. So you can go listen to them, I guess. Not to say that you shouldn't listen to our show, but... Um... <laughs> It's a bold way to start the show. Well, you know, Jeff, we just like to do things different here. So uh, yeah. we're, we're here for, for a little bit of variety or spice. We're, we're here for all the contrarians. Exactly. <laughs> um, the qualifier weekends for this month are all historic. So that's the last time we're going to wow, talk wow. about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guess I'm not playing any of those this time. Yeah, um, that was a bummer because I was like, oh, maybe I could play in some of these. Although yeah. I think that every month and I never play. So. Yeah, it's true. It, it can be really difficult. Uh, weekends are really tough. Um, 
about last one last time i literally just forgot i think i was the up late on the saturday probably just like playing magic when that thing was going on i was just 100 <laughs> forgot <laughs> um we did have a cool like arena event though this last week so i think it was specifically just for halloween uh they didn't I don't really remember them promoting this at all. I must have missed it. I don't know. But um, anyway, they had a free sealed event. Uh, it was Phantom, of course, so you don't get to keep any of the cards. But it was pretty fun. Um, you got to pick if you wanted to be um, part of the Midnight Hunt crew or the Crimson Vow. And basically, the queues would uh, queue up against each other. So if you were in Midnight Hunt, you would only play against Crimson Vow decks and vice versa um which is pretty cool uh and it's a, a free limited event i just jumped in it last night there's some you know free little you know uh icrs or whatever but yeah. um not exciting payouts but i enjoy free events like that that you don't have to really build the deck like they just give you the stuff and part of the event yeah. is building it so yeah free events fun. are cool mm-hmm all right. Interesting. That was my first uh, sip of the beer. <laughs> anyway. I haven't delved in yet. <laughs> Jeff doesn't even try it. Yeah. <laughs> he goes to the altar zone. Bronze. <laughs> Couldn't drink it. Look, took, took one look at it. Said no. <laughs> it was undrinkable to me based yeah. on smell alone. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jeff, let's get into the happy hour. Uh, would you like to explain to us what is a happy hour? It's been a while since we've done one, actually. Yeah, because there hasn't been a new set in a long time. Yeah. Uh, a happy hour is when we look back on a set, the most recent set that we've been playing, and uh, we talk about, well, we take a look at what we thought going into the set, did our mm -hmm. expectations line up with reality, um, you know, we take a look at our uh, worth of slots, see how well we did there. But mostly it's about uh, talking about, you know, how we liked the set and, and what we liked about it. Because it's really easy for you guys to find information on what sucks about what Wizards does or what mm -hmm. <laughs> or what's in a set. So uh, we thought we'd tell you what doesn't suck about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. People love to talk about things that they hate and they want to shit on stuff because it's fun. Um, and there is a place for that, I guess. You, it's easy to bond over things like that but we yeah. prefer to bond over things that we really like. So um, let's get and into that. We try to strike a balance, right? That's the difficulty. That's true. We don't want to tell you every set is amazing because some are better than others, and that's just true. Although mm -hmm. I do say they're mostly pretty good these days. Yes. Uh, like Wizards has gotten it. They've gotten their like template down for how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we want to call them out when they do something thing that we think is not right or is uh you know less than ideal but you know we try to balance that by telling you when things are good so exactly and as far as good things go i think the set was pretty sweet i like this a lot yes i did like this set yeah like coming into it we were talking about how i think in our first sips episode or our pre-game episode actually we we're talking about the the set's mechanics and how they all worked really well together and how yeah. it just seemed like everything in the set we're talking about bargaining you have all the roll tokens uh the first time we're getting aura tokens in like uh actual standard sets uh sorry i'm watching you drink that beer <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see jeff's reaction go to youtube and, and uh <laughs> check out him trying to drink this beer um but anyway, the roll tokens, bargaining with those things, uh, the <laughs> celebration, <laughs> uh, and all that. I uh, food came back, all that stuff. It seemed great to me. I really enjoyed it as well as like the limited format. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of saying that they didn't like it very much, or LSV and Marshall will uh, can can sway people's. Um, they they are. They do the limited resources podcast. They talk all about limited. Uh, they're very good. Uh, LSV is very good. Um, and uh, they know a lot and they play so much more limited than than we do. Uh, so a lot of people will disagree with whatever they say. But I thought this set yeah. was super fun. And I actually played it again. I did a couple more drafts recently after I'd kind of fallen off for a little bit as we were doing our um, 
deck building challenge. Mm-hmm. And it was still super fun. Like I could play a bunch of different things. I have now realized that certain cards or strategies are not as strong as other ones, but I still had a blast. And I, I don't know. I'll, I almost wanted a box just to have to play at some point because I just thought there were so many cool things in the set. So I don't feel that way yeah. about most sets. So I think there's it's worth touching on the whole limited resources thing too because it's just true that's you know the most massive podcast in the limited Mm -hmm. community there's some other big ones that certainly influence things as well but that one's you know the The biggest one yeah um and on the one hand you know people basically what you're saying is true that people are like well they play so much more than me and they've played limited for so long and they're such experts in limited that it makes sense on one level to default to their opinion Mm-hmm. In some sense, like, okay, if Luis says the set is horrible, like, I don't know, I've only played three drafts or whatever, and like, he would know better than me. So I'm, I'm going to say this set is horrible, but I would challenge you to like think about that in the opposite way. When Luis and Marshall say, oh, the set isn't that good, it doesn't have longevity, for example, mm-hmm. it probably doesn't matter to you. It's if true. you're only drafting it three to five times, why does it matter if the set has longevity? Mm-hmm. Like it, it just doesn't or a lot of the times they're looking at it from the lens of like especially Luis and whether he's doing this intentionally or not it's certainly you know his pro his... tour testing influences yeah. his vision of the set and so they're coming at it from the approach of how much uh lever how much more like leverage skill leverage is there so mm-hmm. can a better player really leverage their skill because sometimes that's easier to do with certain sets and sometimes it's harder to do. Like, you know, the better player will win 70% of the time in one draft format, but only 60% of the time in the other. And uh, he will certainly favor the ones where he can leverage his play skill advantage and deck building mm-hmm. advantages. Again, if you're not a pro player, exactly where that number lies probably is less meaningful to you. So yeah. try to like do what Zach just did where he was like well you know what I played it and then I took a break and then I played it and it was still fun Mm -hmm. like what more are you asking from a limited set than that yeah it's true pretty much pretty much nothing like (laughs) you know if you like the flavor you like you know it's you're having fun and then you can come back to it later and still have fun Mm -hmm. hey that's a that's a slam dunk limited set for the majority of magic players and especially ones that like you most as arena a, players most arena players but also you as yeah. a listener of a magic podcast is you should know that you personally are more enfranchised than the majority yeah, of magic like players way in more in general yeah. yeah um the majority of magic players um pick it up every once in a while get a couple packs or play with some friends sometimes or they only play with their brother at christmas or that kind of stuff that is the majority of the magic community and so and they're not coming in having read a set review Mm -hmm. Uh, they haven't analyzed the cards in advance to try to get an edge you know like you have to remember that it has to be fun for those players the first time and Mm -hmm. also for the players that want to you know pour through spoilers and try to get that edge yeah so for me personally um it was said to be fairly fast as far as the limited format went uh i prefer fast formats or faster um where I think we were just talking about LSV and, and Marshall, they prefer really right. long, they have really out. strong bias for them. Mm-hmm. Um, they have if bias. Blue Black is the best deck in the format. They probably love that format. Yeah, it reminds me of Midnight Hunt so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I just know that. So like they said, they didn't like this format very much. I really liked this format. They didn't like March of the Machine, or sorry, they loved March of the Machines. I didn't like it very much. They hated. All will be one. I've really liked all will be one. Oh, so, all will be one was so good. Yeah, <laughs> I love that format. So, I have over the years realized that I just disagree with them on their uh, opinions over certain sets. Um, right, but it's not looking for the same things, right? Yeah, and again, and... the the slow versus fast thing is related to, but uh, like you know, the pro player is going to win the slow game more often than the fast. Exactly. Game. And I am not a pro player, and yeah. I can't leverage my skill the same way that LSV can. Um, right. It's just that's it's just 
I'm, I'm never going to be as good as LSV. Um, so I'm fine with that. And I'm just having fun over here. And it's great. So yeah. Um, if you're out there listening to that podcast as well, or just hearing the community, and you're like, oh, I actually thought this was pretty good, but maybe I'm wrong. No, if you like it, you're right. Like, just listen to what you think. Um, that's the most important thing. And just enjoy. Yeah, like respect, stuff. you know, the, the opinions of people who, mm -hmm. well, respect anyone's opinion, but yeah, of certainly the people who make a living doing that and they play a ton of like, there's a lot to learn from those people. They, mm -hmm. Because we don't, we can't play ten thousand games and then figure out what the best card is. Whereas, exactly, if we use stats or if they they are able to play hundreds of games and tell us, that's awesome stuff. But don't just take their word as gospel. Certainly on subjective matters, don't yes. don't be like, oh man, I must suck at limited because I like this format and they hated it. Yeah, you don't know? do that. Don't do that. Um, but no, I thought no, you suck at limited because it's hard. Okay, <laughs> yeah, not exactly. because of that. <laughs> <laughs> it is really hard. Um, but no, we got the uh, the bonus sheets with the enchanting tales, which I thought all looked absolutely amazing. Uh, these are just beautiful. Um, this time around, I I do think that they were a little bit harder to use. Um, mm -hmm. There were certain ones that were really great. And like, wow, you see them often because they're really good in the set. But there's a lot of ones that you'd see going around in the draft. You're like, no, I don't really want to take that card. It's not very good. <laughs> For sure. Um, and a lot of them were pretty niche, if I remember correctly. Like, yes. They're okay in this deck if you get this version of this deck. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they're... This one's like clearly an artifact that's for red black, but it it really wants to be the like sacrifice version and the rats version of red black cares less about it, like that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, which is exactly where you want these cards to be. Yeah, to be very hyper specific. And I think what you're saying is also true that like the like you saw them a lot because there were like several red ones like goblin bombardment impact tremors and raid bombardment were really good red cards for the rat stack um mm -hmm. and so you ended up seeing them and be like wow these like enchanting tails cards are busted it really just happened to be those few uh right. there's a lot of and good... people love the rat stack right so you see it exactly more often. Yeah, everyone wants it comes to play up. rats yeah because rats are fucking sweet um yeah. but the thing i really do like about it though is that you have really powerful cards in this like um Smothering Tithe, uh, Ristic Study, Bitter, well, Bitter Blossom is fantastic, but um, Necropotence. Um, uh, Necropotence, not so good in Limited. Not so good in Limited. Uh, Ristic Study, not good in Limited. Um, these, like, powerhouse cards. Uh, what, what's the other one that was, I thought, was, oh, Primal Vigor. Um, some Did of these. play that in one of your early drafts? No, 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 no. Someone played it against me. Someone played it against you. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so those cards are really good in another format. And I really love, like, I don't know if this is, feels like a trap where it's like, hey, here's this really good card. And it's a great reprint for the packs for Commander. But when you play it in Limited, um, it's not as good. Um, I think it's really nice, personally, because you're like, oh, sick, this card's so good. But then it starts it makes you start to reevaluate cards that you've seen in a bunch of deck lists or you see on the battlefield a lot in another format and realize, actually, I should pick something else besides Rhystic Study because that card's actually pretty bad in what I'm doing right now. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't I've need seen, it. I've seen a lot of like commander players that then come to draft and they're very experienced commander players, maybe less experienced drafters. And they take mm -hmm. certain cards and you're just like, I see where your bias is coming from. That, that card mm -hmm. seems amazing, but it's like, it's awful yeah. it's like, it's like that card format. would be amazing in commander and it's literally unplayable do not ever put it in yeah. your deck in draft like now and... if you pick it, it like it, we're talking about paper drafts right now if you pick yeah. it for your commander deck that's it's fine fun. that's amazing yeah, yeah. yes please do that that's great we're so pro rare drafting just don't put yeah. it in your deck you guys know that but but take right. it for don't your collection it. yeah yeah because i play against cards like that right I'm just like, yeah what does this card do? And I read it. I'm like, I don't think this does anything. Anything? <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess I will play off curve 
<laughs> so okay. Uh, it's just like, attack with a three three and a two two. Yeah. Is that fine? <laughs> it's turn three, you did nothing. That's good. Uh yeah. so I just wanted to point that out. But all of these are beautiful and um as we're moving into the new play boosters. I don't know if we're getting these bonus sheets anymore, so I'm trying to appreciate them as much as possible before they're gone. And it would be interesting because I think I, I didn't draft this set very much. We were kind of talking about that before. I, I drafted a few times, and then I just there were too many cards for constructed in this set that I wanted to explore. Yeah. Um, and I've but I felt like they've really started to figure out this bonus sheet stuff. They have. Because um, the first time they did it, it was a total shit show. Like, they added all these cards in. They're like, yeah, it's just going to be in draft packs. Let's see how that goes. And mm -hmm. you're just like, what am I losing to? Like, you know, your opponent's just a couple of drunk idiots stone raining you on turn three and you just <laughs> lose the game. Okay. <laughs> no. Stone rain in the Mystical Archive for Strixhaven is still i think that was still amazing and i'm still so oh, glad that i had so it. much fun with it I but don't... it was it was pretty like messed up in terms of balance right like the they I mean, weren't doing this thing where some of them are only good sometimes like we were playing against like swords and stuff in back in the day and, like that was when they were first hinting at this kind of thing yeah like, way way back when they mm -hmm. had essentially this idea and then with Mystical Archives, it was just some of the cards you played against were like, I shouldn't have to play against. Channel. Even like, or yeah. Like... Even uh, Lightning Helix just felt stupid in a limited sure. game. Just like, come on. And Lightning Bolt and Brainstorm. Yeah, Lightning and... Bolt. Well, Brainstorm is great because it is really skill testing. So like, depending on your opponent, they either screw themselves or not. But um, yeah. I have liked this journey with the bonus sheet. And we should uh, continue on with this, but I will. I like set... where we are at, and if that's the end of the journey, that's the end of the journey. But I mm -hmm. thought they'd clearly learned a lot from it. They yeah. were able to put out high quality reprints. I'm sure it affected like historic or whatever. I don't know about that. I don't really care. <laughs> but they gave people <laughs> cards they wanted without making it be like the limited format is just uh, like a Willy Wonka. Do you, did you get the golden ticket? Exactly. Kind of yeah, which is what it felt like with expeditions and masterpieces, um, yeah, and stuff like that. Where this one, it actually was really relevant in all your your limited games, which is really fun and makes these packs more interesting to then also buy in the future. But um, they all look sweet. I'll but... never forget the uh, the masterpieces when I had my black white deck that I thought was really strong, and I just playing a sit down to playing against my opponent. They just dropped Sword of Light and Shadow on turn three. And I was like, there is literally nothing I can do. <laughs> I cannot interact. If you equip that, I lose That's the it. game. <laughs> like, there's, just, there, there's no way for me to beat that card. <laughs> this is why you draft disenchant effects. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just in case your opponent has a sword I, of I had them on my sideboard, so I had to like side them in, and then mm -hmm. obviously they didn't draw it in the next game, and I drew like three disenchants. So like, yeah, like, yeah, sick. This is happened. this is fair. This is fair. Um, magic, love, love it. But anyway, yeah, because they did um, instants and sorceries. We had artifacts, and we have enchantments. Did we do creatures? Oh, we did creatures. Yeah, in mm -hmm. um, uh, Dominaria. United. So that's basically yep. all the stuff, right? You just have lands yeah. after that, and that's like, or right. planeswalkers. But that doesn't really. That's not a fun. We we had that set already. Um, so yeah, it's basically over, and you know, I'm a little sad, but it's you know, it. I don't want them Never to over. Re they can rehash. Always just find a new theme. Right? Like it just doesn't have to be card type anymore. It can be. That's true. I mean, now they're going to do like the special guests and the they have their own thing. I think this For this sure. new thing seems pretty cool. But anyway, um, you were talking about standard with Wilds of Eldrain earlier about how excited you yes. were with those cards. So, yeah, I mean, like we've talked about this on the show a lot, but like I had I've probably had more fun in standard with this set than like really since all be one where I actually got a full deck, you know, 
they gave me the toxic deck that was sweet but like since yeah, then yeah. i just like feel kind of like standard's great and all but we had a blast i i've had so i had much so much fun, fun. Yeah. yeah standard is um, great and yeah like you said i've been liking standard i think standard's in a really great spot right now you know yeah you only see posts on reddit about how standard is the same three decks all the time like once a day now so that means that that's usually a pretty healthy format like, <laughs> that's true everyone you know, people are going to complain yeah. they'll play three games three different decks like, it's yeah. always the same three um <laughs> like, <laughs> so all the games i played today were against one of the following three decks. yeah um but there's actually a lot going on in standard right now there's so much you can play i think some of them look kind of similar so like if you don't have a discerning eye for soldiers versus mono white or, or like mm -hmm. um domain control versus domain ramp mm -hmm. uh, even though those are all pretty different decks uh they feel if you don't play that often it's just mm -hmm. like oh, the same thing uh, but even beyond that it's like there's various different types of mid-range uh, there's various there's i guess there's like two control decks there's esper and then there's the bant kind of domain niche one yeah the ley line there's binding really, one with yeah sunfall yeah and stuff. there's really like one ramp deck but whatever you never really you don't really want more than one ramp deck no. in a format uh, and, and do you even want one animated. honestly yeah, no uh, like, i was gonna say you want you want like 0.25 <laughs> yeah, 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 0.25 ramp decks so like once every four formats if a ramp deck shows up i guess i have to begrudgingly accept yeah that, it's but, like it's all right yeah but especially I, since like it's the natural enemy of the decks that I always play. So I'm just yeah, like, that's true. God damn. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, though it does beg the question, like this is our first set of the new standard three year rotation thing. We should, we should have had rotation in September, but they changed the rules yeah. on us. Um, so really, how do we feel about it? Like it kept all our mana bases. Um, so mana is like crazy right now. Um, and it's getting crazier you have way you have so many options um and i think as we just like continue to add more decks it will be more interesting we'll see but with this first set how do we feel do we feel like it's that this was a good decision i think it's hard to say from this mm -hmm. i think i think the core of a lot of what's going on hasn't changed really with the introduction mm -hmm. of this set but what they did with this set is a um, couple of things so the set on a whole is not that powerful mm -hmm. but there are a few individual cards that i think they may have targeted for certain archetypes um, but also they did the thing where they're like okay we know there's a lot not a lot of great cards in this set but Here's some creature lands. Mm -hmm. And that is bound to change things mm -hmm. because creature lands are essentially the most powerful lands that uh, you'll have access to. Mm -hmm. So it's just such a cool, it's sort of a cool way to attack it. That, like, you know, there's a few staples, there, there are a few auto staples from the set, which every set kind of has. Mm -hmm. There's a like fairies archetype that I think didn't really pan out, but people played it for a while. So that's mm -hmm. that's a fun like thing to kind of throw out there. But really they had the fail safe of we're gonna give creature lands and that has to shake things up because like it it just has to. Yeah. And we're getting the rest of them in the next set. So uh, that will open the door for even more decks that are exciting. Um, right. I think it'll be the thing I'm worried about with the creature lands is like, now these are here for three years. And that's, that's, that's usually they don't love to do that. They're like, they mm -hmm. even put the creature lands in the one year set last time, right? Like, that's um, true. Yeah. In uh, Adventures of the Forgotten Realms, the summer set, which rotates fastest. So, now they're really doubling down because they're like, hey, fall set, here we go. You get mm -hmm. you get a, the it's longest the fall amount of set time. set on a three-year, yeah. So now I like Creature Lands personally, but... Mm -hmm. And I guess they're giving them to every color pair. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them are naturally going to be better than others. Of course. 
and it wasn't the one that we thought <laughs> which is yes that, that's actually coming into the show i wanted to call that out that we mm -hmm. said restless fire was the best one and i think we were definitively wrong like very very sharply wrong that yeah. uh that i don't is, think i've ever played against restless Spire. <laughs> i've never i've seen it on the battlefield once during limited and i don't think they even activated it so yeah i think i maybe played like a weird red blue spells deck that obviously we had it yeah kind of delver of secrets thing but uh that was a pretty easy win because they were still kind of flushing out how their deck was going to operate totally uh, um, and i don't think they activated this as fire a single time so yeah it's just uh you know we thought that because it was the cheapest one to activate and there would be something going on, but because we don't even have a blue red deck at all, mm -hmm. that's totally why. Like, there's no spells deck. There's no... There's yeah, no I was thinking it's the best in a vacuum kind of thing. And yeah, probably we... it's the best in older formats, that, you know, older of than course. Yeah, yeah. arena formats and, and maybe even historic. Like, actually, mm -hmm. probably in historic red because historic has always... Mm -hmm blue red decks always win his big historic tournaments yeah there's the, the that wizard's deck that everyone's still talks about um but yeah the 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 fact that the best one is like restless cottage mixed with like i see restless cottage and i see restless um vine stock so the the black green one and the green blue one full thailands yeah yeah uh tend to be the ones i see the most i um, barely played against the other three and then between Vinestock and Cottage, it's like 80% mm -hmm. Cottage and then 20% yeah. Vinestock. Exactly. If that, and, it might even be it might even be more heavily. To, like, you yeah. see a lot of Restless Cottage. You see so much. It's like the only one. Uh, but that's because Golgari and It's is. also the only one I've played. So I'm, co I'm contributing to this uh, yeah. overwhelming majority for Restless Cottage. Yeah, I like... Uh, no... I want to pretend like the other ones have like some merit, but they're cool. But I think they're fine, right? If if mm -hmm. there is a Boros deck, it's gonna want Restless Bivouac, kind of. I mean, this has always been the issue that they they need Boros untapped. decks desperately want untapped land, yeah. so they're exactly. never gonna play more than one or two of this card. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the the green black like mid range grind you out. They just want pretty much four of these, maybe three. But... Mm -hmm yeah and the amount of just like random incidental graveyard hate that's in standard right now is crazy and this is another yeah i always underestimate it. like mm -hmm. i even forget a lot of the time that this does that and then i'm like yeah. what should i be doing i'm like oh of course i should just attack with the cottage and exile their stupid deck that's yeah. what I, that's what i should do. And yeah I you gotta eat all their stuff and I always, yeah, I think the same thing where it's like, oh, it's a 4 4 and it makes a food. But it's like, yeah. oh, wait, there's another. Oh, yeah, it I also know. does something on top of that. Crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's been. Uh, cottage is the bomb. Cottage is the bomb. Um, but I, you know, I agree. Standard's in a pretty awesome place. Um, we did make some shots that uh, ended up panning out. Um, so we'll, we'll get to those in a second but before we do that i did want to point out that there's one card that's not being played in standard at all that was a huge at the beginning of the set um beseech the mirror has uh -huh. been nowhere uh i'm offended because i'm playing that card oh uh, what I I, just, I have it in my Omnix list combo deck as a way to play fewer uh, all will be ones. <laughs> oh, that's great! No, 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 that's that's yeah. a, like that's a good reason to do it. Um, but you know, at the beginning of the the set, we even talked about this, like that it everyone was saying, "Oh, this is a four of it's amazing." Besiege the mirrors, like this tutor, but it brings it to the battlefield, bargaining so easy, all this stuff. Um, but this they were literally saying it's shielded five through eight thanks Wiggins. exactly like, yeah. and the Never fact gonna play that, against anything other than blue black now yeah and it they tried very quickly i think those people learned very quickly that they had to cut down to one copy and then yeah. realize maybe i didn't even play this card zero is the right 
Yeah, right. yeah, it's like they realized you don't want children five through eight. Because <laughs> children doesn't do anything when it lands on the battlefield. Um, yeah. You need something super impactful, um, like your combo winning card. Like <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. You, like you, you, if you have this enchantment, you win the game. And like, then, like in a sacrifice deck, so bargain, mm -hmm. you know, is, it's not a high cost to pay. Yeah, you don't have to like do anything else. Um, I just thought that was really interesting. I don't think we fell super hard into the trap, but we did talk about the card quite a bit. And I said I wanted to do with it what I am doing with it. I was perfect. like, I want to play an anvil and go get fetch my combo. And sometimes I'm just going to go get an anvil because that's mm -hmm. what I need. Yeah, and that's that's what I do. Yeah, and that sounds like the perfect use for this card. Um, yeah. So, sorry. And I'm I, not even sure it's that good. I might still cut it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, I, I think it's fine. But it was like the chase card at the beginning. That was like this, so this is, is one best. of those classic cards. Just to mm. tangent again a little bit, but it's one of those classic cards where, when it wins me the game, or when it does well, it's like in your face about it. It's like, oh, you needed an anvil to get things going. I got you that. Or mm -hmm. you, you had your all will be one. I put up Nixilis right onto the battlefield. Game over. You yeah. Know. Thank you. You're welcome. And when it loses you the game, it's a little more innocuous. But it's just like, there just wasn't a... I didn't have an efficient way to use this card mm -hmm. at any point. And if this had just been an and like an anvil or just been something that I just Else. cast and it mm -hmm. like doesn't cost four and take my whole turn and like have to sack something when I'm maybe not set up to want to sack something like mm -hmm. it's a little harder to like log that into your brain of mm -hmm. I lost this game because of Besiege the Mirror. Yeah. And so these cut types of cards tend to be overrated for that reason. Because you're like doing that as a thought experiment you're doing that before you've, you've like you've played with cards like this in the past and you maybe didn't realize that you're losing the game because you have these exactly. cards so yeah, they totally, look totally. better mm -hmm. than they are tutors but... always look better than they are because the original tutors were awesome because mm -hmm. they were cheap and yes that's what made them good that's it that's mm -hmm. it they were one and two mana that's why they were good yeah a lot of times this is a diabolic tutor diabolic yeah. yeah, diabolical tutor, which yeah. is terrible. Which is terrible. Um, it's just, yeah, it's and even it, that card still gets people. Like if you're newer, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, yeah. this card's awesome. Oh, it's like it's nope, so it's cheap. Really, really it's like uh, you know, demonic tutor, but so much uh, cheaper, like money wise, to to buy. Uh, right. And then you realize, well, adding four to the card you want to play is so much worse than adding two to it. So. You have um, to think about how good is the card you're planning on getting that adding four mana and a full turn cycle mm -hmm. is worth it. Like it's this, still that it's still good. Is it <laughs> still that good? Skipping a whole turn. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to quickly touch on that as we um Yeah, I forgot about that card because Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> that's that's what I wanted to remind everybody of. Um but as far as flavor wise goes and the entire set as a whole and everything about it, I thought it was our great, it was a fantastic return to a plane we hadn't returned to. And um, I like that they, they dug in even deeper on all the fun, like candy jokes and all the food and everything. Yes. It was yeah. great. Like I love that ginger brute was the experiment. And then they mm -hmm. were like, you know what? People fucking love ginger brute. So mm -hmm. here you are, tough cookie. And I think that ginger brute, literally ginger brute, is a card that we'll, we will look back to in the future and be like, wow, did this start a whole thing? Because that was the mm -hmm. benchmark for like the jokiest card that they could really the put silliest, in a standard. Yeah. yeah. And now we're doing so many silly things as full standard sets where we're like, we're going to a Wild West set that's going to have a bunch of shit like that. Like, they know the player base, like, will lean into it and they like it. Um, and so I, I think Ginger Brute was what started all of this. And I agree. I, and I, I remember reading the preview for mm -hmm. Ginger Brute for the first time, and I just loved it. I was like, that's hilarious. 
this and is amazing. And it's good. I wish they and did it's... cards like this more often. Yeah. And I think we're getting a lot of more a lot more of that in the future. So mm -hmm. um here we go, folks. Jump on board. I sure am. Um but anyway, Jeff Pro let's Ginger get... Brood all the way. Pro Ginger Brood, of course. Uh let's get to our worth of slots and see yeah. how they they stacked up over time. Uh, now that we're at the end of the set, I will let you go first. Uh, to, All right. So to I am very happy with my lamp. Mm -hmm. uh, my my lamp was um, Mosswood Dread Knight. You all know what that card is because you've all played against it. But mm -hmm. uh, this this along with Restless Cottage, I'll say. So it's not entirely like just this card. Mm -hmm. uh, but it basically spawned a new deck in standard, which is just mm -hmm. green black mid range. Like there was some amount of that kicking around before with Glissa and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But everyone was just like, "This is just worse." Blue black. Why are people playing this? Yeah, you know, it's it's just if you like these cards, I guess so. But it, you're giving mm -hmm. up a lot of percentage points. Now it's like, okay, it's just good against different things. They're both really strong mid range decks because yeah. again, of this and the cottage um but this is certainly a big part of it and i play against this card pretty often yes all the time it's one of the things that you want to be able to exile from their graveyard um yeah before they can cast it on an adventure um mm -hmm. so you, you can try to psych them out i've actually was thinking recently like i think there's a an exile shock in this format like i should just i should just play that card. play that like what is it called? Something about fire, obviously. Play with fire? No, no, no. That doesn't exile. Um, that one goes to face. That's why. That yeah, that goes to it. face. Yeah. Um, what is? Oh, you loved it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you put that in so many decks. I'm a big um, fan of that card. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the problem is like you're cutting the. It was an uh, the artifact sacrifice for that one. Yeah, yeah. get the four, but, but you, do you need the four? Like. Sometimes? No, actually, no. There, we literally have one in this set, dude. They, those three. Um, I know. Sorry. But, okay, Forge so the tower. That, What's wrong Forge with the tower? Yeah, it's it's. I don't know why Ben. Don't get me started, but I don't know why Benton Madison played Torch the Tower mm -hmm. instead of Voltage Search. I don't get it. Like, is the Scry really better than being able to kill Rafine? There's no way. There's so many four toughness things mm -hmm. that, uh, like. I guess it does the exiling thing that I'm oh, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah. No matter what, he, you don't even have to cut bargain. All voltage surge for torch the tower, so he can never deal four damage. That's what blew, that's what I didn't understand. I guess he was just never trying to deal four damage. Because you want to deal five damage. Well, why do you think Rafine won one? the tournament? Uh, right. Okay. Fine. Fine. Four toughness stuff. Adeline, Adeline, Mono White was huge at that turn. Okay, you're right. And I bet he's sitting there with Torch the Tower. Son of a. Oh, but I was thinking tower. like Blessed by Flame or something. There's some, so there was some old one, but yes, Torch the Tower. Yeah, is better, there's so. the one in Innistrad, but that one also doesn't jump up to the four. So, yeah, um, you're right. Torch the Tower is the one that I should maybe consider a copy or two of. Yeah, um, but no, you're absolutely right. You. You had that nice, nice, sweet layup. Um, I think you won the coin flip, so that's why you got that one. Uh, you would have picked your card anyway. I probably would have. So my <laughs> layup was Wear Fox Bodyguard. Um, what? Sorry, what card is that? I've never heard. Of it's Wear Fox Bodyguard. Okay, um, I've seen it a couple times. It isn't a four of card most of the time in your decks. Uh, people usually play two. It it made it into some. I have played against it, so it's not just me playing it. I know that. Mm -hmm. But they were like mono white in the sideboard or um, soldiers, essentially. So I, I think, to be fair, that's basically what you said. Yeah. White decks want to have access. White creature decks want to have access. I was like, it will be played. Um, but it was probably a better three-pointer than a layup. I think so. it would have been too strong to really... Like, it's it, maybe it's in between. It's like a. It's, it's one a of those weird shot. ones. It's yeah. Like, maybe not. And that happens all the time where it's like, there's probably a better choice for a layup. But this is the card I want to talk about, and I don't feel comfortable putting it in as a three pointer. Yeah, that does that make sense. Of, 
anyway, that was my my layup because my I felt about Godric, and I decided not to talk about Godric because I was just like, Godric's too good to be a three pointer. It yeah, but it's also one of the reasons why Mono Red is like coming back. Um, yeah. But anyway, my three pointer was Sir Ginger the Meal Ender. Um, not. Uh, not really doing what I was hoping it was doing. I think the weird thing with Sir Ginger actually is that a lot of the time when you're attacking with it, when I was playing it in the food deck that we had, um, you would get in the weird scenario where you attack in and they flash in their, uh, like it, it is Wandering Emperor proof because they can flash in Wandering Emperor and try to exile it, but they can't because it has hex proof now because yeah. it's on the battlefield, but they will just make a 2-2 and kill it. And so it. I never had the situation where they had a Planeswalker and then I got to drop it, have yeah. give it haste, hexproof, trample. Because um, even if I did have so, that, it wouldn't kill the Planeswalker. It basically just like... That's exactly it. it. So when I was reading this card, I was like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. It's for Wandering Emperor. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you can't exile this. And if you make the 2-2, I still trample over it. Mm -hmm. But I don't trample over it onto the Wandering Emperor. I trample mm -hmm. over it onto your face. Onto your That's face. That's so much worse. Yeah. They just take it. They just take it, and then they make a 2-2 on end step, and then yeah. they unback. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. All right. That's not that's not as Wandering Emperor proof as I originally thought it was. It feels yeah. like it is, mm -hmm. but it's not really. Um, I, I was still also, love this card, though. I love it, too. I was also thinking that it would be a card against Liliana when they bring it in and you like sacrifice your one creature lily's at one you can trample over one damage to kill it but it just really never had it happened the other way where i turned i just turned to sir ginger and then they play liliana and they're like oh hexproof lol oh, yeah this too and i'm like <laughs> no like, <laughs> this fucking yeah so i think i think i was a bit too uh kind of tunnel brained when we did these earlier yeah. Yeah. uh but what was your three-pointer for the set um, I think yours was still better than mine. Mine, mine was food fight. <laughs> uh, which I don't think I need to talk about. Everyone knows what that does uh, because it's so prevalent. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I knew this would be a card that pretty much only I played, but so I'm still happy I picked it and threw it out there. I think the card's pretty good. My experience with it is like, and this might be a bit of the no rotation thing, the Anvil deck just has so many options and tools mm -hmm. already um, that, that I found, while this was pretty strong and won me a lot of games, it just suffered from the... Sometimes I draw this and it doesn't do enough. Mm -hmm. And, like, the deck already has a bit of that. Like, Anvil on its own doesn't, is doesn't do anything. And you can't sack and this Anvil to Anvil. My, yeah. yeah, the Anvil is much better than this. So, mm -hmm. like... I think it's in a world where we went and rotated. I guess Anvil would have rotated, but like, mm -hmm. if there was still an artifact sacrifice deck going on, it would need something like this because it would need an engine card. And I mm -hmm. almost wonder if when they designed this card, that's kind of what was in the back of their mind. No, I, they designed this card as a top down. We want a card that says food fight on it. What would it do? That's that's what <laughs> right, they did. but like you know, and it, it it's justification in the final file is like maybe. Um maybe they would have changed the numbers had it sure. Had yeah, it okay. Known, that, you know that uh, yeah, the, the it, it would have cost more probably. Um I think that uh I was really Start surprised. Is good, it is good. Nobody's I was really it. surprised Nobody's you didn't submit a food deck with this card <laughs> that was insane to me that you picked it certainly and, thought about it and <laughs> threw it in the trash um yeah, that's God. yeah <laughs> uh, insane um, honestly i just had too much fun once i went down the tesseret route that i was it's like so... i guess this is what we're doing actually i i uh <laughs> so listen to our last episode if you want to know about that deck um and then go to our discord we have all the decks uh listed there so you can uh you can steal them uh, steal them, take them, and play them, and change them. But I did play your deck uh, recently, and it was a blast. Uh, it's fun, a, right? so much fun. So I was yeah. like, "Fuck, your deck is so much more fun than mine." That's so good. Uh, 
so so go check those out but um jeff what was your full court shot we also didn't explain what our if you don't understand what we're talking about with our with our uh, worth of slots go to our first sips episode we always explain it there because i don't want to yeah. do it right now um, yeah um but okay we have a half court shot this is something that i thought might be played but yeah. like is pretty sketchy um i went with bramble familiar because mm -hmm. uh i basically was thinking about this uh cascade combo deck this showed up a bit at the beginning, but people realize it's kind of bad. I'm going to give this one my to me, though. I'm going to get take the three points on this one because uh, people played it at the World Championships. Yep. So there you go. I think it's and it it has like side applications in other bad decks, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the <laughs> the bad version of the cauldron combo deck. People often play mm -hmm. this. Um, so this is just like this card's in in ill-advised combo decks all across the format. So. Yeah. Yeah. It is the card that uh, when my opponent plays it, I'm like, oh, sick. Yeah, they're playing this stupid deck. Awesome. Like, honestly, of the list so far, this is the one I play against second most after Mosswood Dread Knight. <laughs> yeah. But but one of those two drops, I'm happy when they play, and mm -hmm. one of them, I'm less happy when they play. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, my full court shot is Ariette of the Charmed Apple. Uh, I have not seen other people play this card. I know other people made decks and did some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really sweet. And I've seen a couple random decks around. However, it didn't pop off. And the version I was playing uh, didn't really make it. I think I'm sub 50% with that deck. So it's... Uh, didn't get that. When you're brewing, though, it's never really... The aggregate win rate's never fair. It's true, it's true. It's like I started at 30%, and mm -hmm. now I'm up to 60 and You could look at the overall as, like, 45 But, but most of the time, uh, its punching power was quite low. Mm -hmm. You basically needed your opponent to play a ton of creatures, and then you able be able to do some stuff to drain them out. So uh, even myself... Uh, I'm not off the card. I really like it, but I think through playing the deck, there were other cards that I realized were a lot better um, yeah. and that this specific card wasn't the reason to do it. Even though it was the reason I started the journey, um, mm -hmm. it's not where I ended. So um, cool card. Uh, fun in Commander, honestly. Like This seems like a really sweet Commander card, um, but maybe not. I still, uh, I still believe in Ariette's antics and want to... Yeah, you know, it's a yeah. I I don't know if I got to work on that one anymore, but uh, that's you know. the thing, right? Sometimes you're just like, I just don't want to work on this anymore because there's so many other cool ideas. Exactly. Like, I'm sure I could make this better, but I think Ariette as like a one of fun of in like an Azorius or as deck sure. a pioneer could be good. Um, yeah, but that deck isn't any isn't as good because you don't have Luris anymore, so. Luris was the reason you'd play that deck in the first place. Uh, there's a lot of decks that fit that. Uh, that are like that. Um, overrated cards for the set. We picked one uh, each. I'll start. Um, Shattered Oath. Just coming back to remind everyone. I Who is mad about this card? Who is anyone? Anyone mad about Shattered Oath? I actually don't remember what the card is. Shattered Oath is the uh, three black oh, black yeah, yeah, for yeah. a sorcery that uh, destroys a creature or enchantment and then right. puts a wicked roll <laughs> on something. No? Nothing? Nobody? Interesting, because that card fucking sucks, and why was anyone mad about <laughs> this at the beginning of the set? How many commander games did you play where this card was actually in it? I'm. This is me talking directly to somebody on Twitter. But... Oh, this is what confused me. You're talking about Shatter the Oath. Yeah. What did that I say? Shattered Oath. Oh, did I write the wrong oh, thing? Oh my god. <laughs> of course. Yeah, Shatter the Oath has been awesome. I play against it all the time and it feels unfair. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I wrote down the wrong thing on our <laughs> on our spreadsheet because this is how much I care about this card. Sorry, Shatter the Oath. <laughs> yes. This, this <laughs> random trash to your confidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Um Sorry, Shatter the Oath. Wow, I just ruined my whole thing. Now I look like a, I got egg on my face. Terrible. 
Sorry, anyway, I no, no, no. It's good that you said something because otherwise people would be commenting, telling me that I'm an idiot. That's so right. Yeah. Now I can... they've, they've already typed the message though. I, yeah, it's too late. They stopped the. And... They stopped the video. They <laughs> they threw it away. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just want to to say to everyone who's upset that Black has enchantment removal, it's you're way late. They have they've already have a much better <laughs> version from a set like four years that ago. Unplayable trash. Shatter the oath is horrible. So. Not and I would say, like, adding this to limited is relevant. Otherwise, they mm -hmm. can't make enchantments that, like, oh, Black's just going to lose to this. Yeah. Um, and so what they've done is the right way to give Black that boost. It's like, yeah. nobody's ever going to play this card in any constructed format, ever. Mm -hmm. People might side it in in limited if there's an enchantment that they can't beat. That's that's mm -hmm. what this is for. They will run one copy. If they run more than that, their deck's gonna be bad. So exactly. That's that's the that's the game. <laughs> that's what it was uh, for. Anyway, but uh I will say that through this I was very reluctant to ever pick it because I was like in in draft, I was like, fuck that card, <laughs> stupid piece of no, shit. No, I said it was over. Yeah, why yeah. do you think that I didn't craft children for like two and a half years? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it's been now. Yeah, that's um, true. I literally couldn't play the blue black deck we wanted to play at first because I only had one shield red that I happened to mm -hmm. open in a pack. I was like, all right, fine, I'll draft some goddamn or I'll craft oh, some. Some <laughs> Now you have four. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um and I I don't play them still, so yeah. Well you did. All it was I important. It was, Jeff, it was I important. It was overrated ones. Yeah, I know. I cut I cut them immediately though. That was like the first thing I did. Was I gotta cut all these stupid children. I know, but it's still a good card that's <laughs> everywhere. And you have to if you have to think about it when you're playing standard as a card you're dealing with, it's good. And it's not <laughs> I <don't>, I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever. Uh it leads you, me to my next card. Yeah, yeah. And my classic rant that overrated doesn't mean it's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I know, I know. Because people always give me that shit, right? Like, oh, shield is so good. I can't call it overrated. It's like, because people literally think they can't play standard because this card's in it. It's not that good. <laughs> it is good. good. That's the definition of overrated. Mm -hmm. You found one of the peculiar cases of overrated where the card is uber garbage and people are concerned <laughs> about it. Yes. Generally, overrated <laughs> cards are good. They're just not, not as good, good as, like... They're not like as game defining as people make them out to be. Yeah. Children's a four or five, guys. Let's settle down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it has death touch. <laughs> exactly. What a weird thing on a four or five. <laughs> yeah. Um anyway, Jeff, get into your overrated card because I want to okay. rip you. Because this, this is one. gonna ruffle even more feathers. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, no, no, no. It's no. gonna ruffle fewer feathers, but it's good, it's the similar thing. Um <laughs> I said that blossoming tortoise was mm -hmm. overrated. And there's two, that's the two, uh, just because you probably haven't heard of it. It's two green green for a 3-3 three, three <laughs> creature turtle. When it ETP four attacks, you mill three, then return a land or something. And Jeff, then like they... activated abilities of lands <laughs> cost less. And lands get, it's like a landlord. Huh. Well, Weird. yeah, they know. Oh, it's a landlord. Oh, that's perfect, actually. <laughs> Why has no one talked about how... I've never heard that before. That's Golgari... why I just, when I just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Gol... Literally a landlord. Golgari <laughs> landlords? <laughs> <laughs> now I kind of want to play it. <laughs> Jeff, first Deck of all... names are everything to me. Okay, yeah. Well, first of all, Golgari landlords is definitely coming because in Ixalan, there's a cave thing going on. I don't know if it's going to be good, but this card... Oh, card's... yeah, there's like a cave... Like, yeah, there yeah. is like a land tribal. Hey, and this card is definitely going in that deck. Now, now I'm going to have to craft it even sooner than the Shieldreds. But the amount of times that like this card, I don't, it's not busted in any sense, but it is much better than a, just a dumb land thing. Because like the four mana creature that like ramps you and then continues to bring back your your cottage is so annoying your opponent's cottage is just like a five five and then when it yeah. when you kill it they just bring it back it's just like yeah so i have a few things to say here this feels like okay so this was a reaction to the hype around this card i was just seeing it everywhere yeah just to remind everyone like... there was a ton of hype about this card if you... yeah and i was like okay, i don't think it's that good um i think it kind of sucks Mm -hmm. uh, 
and then no but the point was like it's not i know i know better. no i know i know i know um and now okay the, the one thing i wanted to say is if i gave myself credit on the three-pointer because people brought that to worlds mm -hmm. this card top aided worlds mm -hmm. so maybe i have to acknowledge that and say that's... that i said was overrated top aided yeah. worlds like immediately mm -hmm. <laughs> like a week later it was yeah. like top eight of worlds like, almost one <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's better than i thought it was it's mm -hmm. a lot better than i thought it was is it overrated i don't know this like with shieldred i was like okay i admit shieldred is better than i thought it was but it's still not as good as you guys are saying this one's a little closer, I think. This one's better than I thought it was, but people aren't saying this is ruining standard. It's true, it's true. Right? So it's like, maybe I was just low on it and other people were appropriate. Mm -hmm. Shieldred, I was low on it and other people were too high on it. Yeah. And so I yeah, still I mean, feel it's under overrated. This one, I'm like, I don't know, maybe I was just wrong on this one. Like, it's just good and people think it's good. Good, And like, yeah. that's where we're at. It's not just like a random... I don't think it's just a random only works in lands matter decks. It works in just right. your running mill decks. Though to be fair, on turn four in Golgari mid range, when they drop this card instead of Shieldred, I breathe a sigh of relief. And I'm like, thank God. It's just this thing. So yeah, I think that's the depends which deck you're playing, because that would be the opposite. But that's uh, because I'm gonna kill it either way, and this gets value coming in. Yeah. And for me, it's like I wanna attack that turn, and a three three is easier to attack into than a four five. So yeah, that tends to be what happens for me. Um, They're equivalent to attack and do for me. I have a C of one ones. That's that's true. That's true. Um, um, it's the life gain from shield. It's kind of. Um, that, oh, that last is... thing I just wanted to quickly say about this card is that okay. Um, I think the reason this card, or a big part of the reason this card is better than I thought it was, is that Restless Cottage is a lot better than I thought it was. And That's I think true. if Restless Cottage is not as good as it is, then this card sees less play. I think you're absolutely right. Yep. Making less Restless Cottage cheaper and Restless Cottage bigger. as a four four that costs three to activate feels stupid. No, five five, five, five. Oh yeah, sorry. It's already a four four. Yeah. It becomes a five five. Yeah, yeah. It just feels it's, stupid. It's huge. And that they probably got for free. Yes. Like mill because they always mill restless cottage with this card. And oh, it's, it's, of it should say mill three restless cottages and return them all to the battlefield because somehow yeah. that's what this card seems to do. Usually they they but... mill a restless cottage and a tenacious underdog <laughs> just for later. <laughs> yeah. So that tends to be the case. Uh, Jeff, you're un as we're snaking your underrated card for okay set. I don't know if this one landed either, but. This was Knight of Sweets Revenge. Mm -hmm. So this is the enchantment that basically it turns all your food tokens into mana accelerators and then gives you a big way to pump your team yeah. uh, equal to the number of food tokens. I do still like this card, but I tested a few copies in my food deck and it just never felt worth it. What it felt like to me was the games where this would help you win, you didn't need it to win. Like, it, no. it, sure, it, it makes you win that turn or whatever mm -hmm. because you just pump your team and you attack, but you were going to win anyways, maybe two, three turns instead. And I tend to... To me, that's like, okay, I just don't need this card. Like, it costs four. It's going to lose me a lot of games because it's expensive and it doesn't do a ton on Anything. its own. Yeah. And the games where it's winning, I probably could have won anyways. That's the death now. So maybe this card was appropriately rated as mm -hmm. being bad. Kind of bad. I I agree. Um, the actual thing that I was dealing with the most with this card is that it the treasures only, or sorry, the food only makes green mana. And because yeah. we were both playing three color decks, that three ended up being deck, yeah. a, really a big hindrance. Like if you had... Uh, a turn four where you have like two or three treasures already you can play this and then tap all of them and play tesseret like how good would that be like that'd be a difference yeah I, and i even remember thinking that like if this said mm -hmm. tap for any color oof. Oof, much better um but but because it's only green uh it really limits the cards you can play afterwards and it just didn't really end up and up. all of my two drops were green and mm -hmm. were castable off this because i had you know whatever sir ginger in there for a while yeah and it still didn't feel right 
Because right. yeah. the plan was you drop this, you play a two drop, right? Yeah. But... And it just never really felt great. And then you're just like, okay, it's there. Uh, or you yeah. drop this, you drop ginger brew. And like that, that generally is what would happen. Mm -hmm. It just it was wasn't. just like, didn't I don't know. It didn't pretty feel similar good. to just playing ginger brew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, very, very <laughs> similar. So um, it did make it easier to, like, no, it was bad. I didn't like it. Um, my underrated card was Sleep Cursed Fairy um, that I was using a lot and I really did enjoy, um, but its popularity did decrease significantly after people stopped caring about the fairy deck. Um, I still think this card is pretty sweet. I love having Ward 2 on a one drop. That is yeah. awesome. Um, I, I would say you were right about this card. Like People played a lot of fairies, didn't quite get mm -hmm. there, but it's still around as a possibility but it also is a big part of several versions of the uh, cauldron deck cauldron combo yeah that's true because cauldron. of its untap, untap ability, ability like probably a completely different reason than <laughs> you were picking yeah, it the, but, the type of thing uh, that i wouldn't really think about um because combo e is not exactly my favorite but um yeah, I, I still think the card went from like, holy shit, this is busted to, oh shit, this isn't very good to actually it's pretty, it, they did a good job balancing it. Um, yeah. Which I thought was really interesting. And I still think it's good. I still like it. Um, all right. Now, as we're through our worth of slots, we do have a couple more cards we need to pick. These are just our favorites. Um, yeah. Just to round out the set, just to be like, hey, give some shout outs to these cards uh, that maybe didn't get to to see as much though you know who knows knowing me or knowing us we might be talking about cards we've talked about in the past so what are you gonna do um but uh, i'm not i am <laughs> uh i'm gonna start us off with sure. limited so uh my favorite card for limited uh this wasn't necessarily my favorite card to play or whatever but i think this card is awesome and hilarious which is the best of both worlds worlds um is the card uh appropriately nicknamed pocket rat or pocket rats which is right out um so that's the uh like black instance that target creature gets minus one minus one and then you make a one one black rat um i just think this card is hilarious like the art is a guy throwing a rat on a dude like below a bridge and yeah. <laughs> it's so funny and also good because there's a lot of like x ones in the in the limited format um right so it it ended up just being a sweet card and not that it was like extremely overpowered but every time i saw it in a pack i'm just like oh pocket rat and i'm just like oh i want to take it i want to play this now i oh i shouldn't but i like it um so that that's my rat out story <laughs> i think the card's great. that's so interesting it's <laughs> like when i saw this i was like oh it's bad fungal infection or whatever. yeah <laughs> and fungal infection was so overrated like i remember it was this, you know similar to the limited resource stuff we were talking about earlier but certain people were peddling that it was good but then they were mm -hmm. playing in the intermediate mtgo league mm -hmm. and i was like when as someone who plays in the advanced leagues like nobody walks into fungal infection ever mm -hmm. and so like it's just sitting in your hand doing f all all game and you wish it was literally anything else so i i just don't understand how players who are clearly better than me mm -hmm. are spreading this like thing but it's because they're playing against players who are worse than the players i'm playing against so it's yeah. like very it was very effective for them right it's um, fungal infection that's from um like og dominaria yeah not not OG, also OG, like, but the set dominaria. also a set that i think is overrated in terms of how fun a limited format it is but we we digress back another, into the another day. what people tell you is yeah. good versus mm -hmm. what is fun i think i agree with you um, on that as well actually um uh, but yeah rat out is hilarious because i just love like fungal infection the idea was you like you make something weaker and then you block it with a one one and this mm -hmm. is like the one one can't block so it's just it's just about killing x ones now yes. if there are a lot of x ones that's awesome because this is pretty sweet mm -hmm. uh, instant speed kill your x one make a one one is good if your opponent doesn't have a lot of x ones this card is 
awful. Yes. <laughs> um, I love it. That's a great choice. But, ha, pocket rat. Yeah, I love the yeah, pocket rat. <laughs> I even like the name rat out that they yeah, gave it. It's also good. Um, but pocket rat is funnier. <laughs> All right. So am I allowed to choose from my limited card? Um, you can choose whatever you want, Jeff. I There are no rules. You know what? I don't really want to choose a reprint, though. But I was going to ask if I could choose an enchanting tale. Um, I mean, I honestly don't care. I'd rather you talk about a card that you're excited about, but you know, do whatever, Jeff. You know what? It's up to you. Oh man, that's the like do whatever the worst. you think is best, but don't make the wrong choice. That's true. Um, I mean, like I am holding. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had the most fun in my very limited experience Ooh. Playing, playing draft um, mm -hmm. with shared animosity. Uh, <laughs> that is from the. Uh, <laughs> enchanting tales and it's the one where like whenever a creature attacks it gets plus one plus so for each other creature type that shares uh, uh shares a creature type with it yeah obviously i had this in a rat's deck but i think i told the story way back when when we did it mm -hmm. so i won't rehash it too much but i took a bunch of like these type of cards early and then just got no rats cards for the rest of the draft. <laughs> i had like four or five of them and the whole plan was Oh, we're going to do like the shared animosity. I think I had a couple of them and like, mm -hmm. you know, the goblin bombardment slash impact Trevor's kind of thing. Cause I picked all of those up right away. And I just like rats, especially at the beginning of the format, rats was insanely popular. So you just, I just didn't get any rats cards. And so I was taking like random creatures that shared creature types, <laughs> <laughs> and, like pockets oh of two God. or three oh, creatures. <laughs> And uh, I actually won a lot of games off shared animosity because I just happened to draw the pockets. No, that's so funny. Um, it's yeah, just, especially like, you know funny. I love this card. Because you know that those players saw those shared animosities. And like, nobody <laughs> yeah. wants this card. I'm going to take the rats first and it'll wheel. And then you're like, I'll get the rats later. <laughs> yeah, no. -uh. <laughs> uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. That's funny. Um, let's jump to, down to standard. Um, I do have a card, so I will jump out. There there was one I was going to say, but we've talked so much about it. Um, I'm going to talk about another card that we've also talked about uh, a lot. Um, but like Asinine Antics ended up being a card that when I first Love looked it. at it, I was like, ah, eh, this card isn't super exciting, whatever. Okay, it does this thing. To when I was building the area deck, uh, I realized this card was so strong and like exactly what I wanted and just like worked and was really fun and good and yeah it's awesome it's also the art is sweet like all the art is sweet but like it's yeah it's it's nice so uh asinine antics i will be sad when i'm actually not playing this card anymore so it's the card that was your favorite card but we've talked about it too much were you talking about ginger brood or tough cookie i was talking about tough cookie yeah so I was yeah. like, I can't pick Ginger Brew because it's a reprint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Tough Cookie, but we've mentioned Tough Cookie so many times. <laughs> so I'm going to say welcome to Sweet Tooth. Okay. Um, because I think that's a card that kind of flew under my radar until I started playing with it in our food challenge. Mm -hmm. And I was like, actually, this is the two drop I always want on turn two. Yeah. Like my dream is Ginger Brew, welcome to Sweet Tooth, and then like a Tough Cookie afterwards, plus like a make a food for one mana whether that's ginger brood or the uh oh god the adventure yeah um but i love this card welcome to sweet tooth it's super fun um that that one one white human creature token gets big yes and if your opponent doesn't respect when this you know, is gonna go on on Saga three there and just mm -hmm. taps out against your ginger brute. You're just laughing. You yeah. just have a massive ginger brute. They're probably sitting there with go for the throat in their hand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is to be you. That no haste creatures in your deck, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I guess you lose. <laughs> That's the best. The fact that like the other thing with the food decks that we did last week is that like go for the throat is so like it's terrible so bad <laughs> it we literally just... usually targets this one one white human creature because it's the only thing that they can do and so yeah. they're like and this so then you know put the counters on an artifact because like uh, i was playing Untus's retrofitter so i had to be a bit careful because like mm -hmm. that animates the food and then they kill that right. and the food 
stops uh, being a creature. This animates. Yeah. So I would never cast that into the mana for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, yeah, they just couldn't target anything. <laughs> <in my deck. laughs> oh, it's amazing. Okay. Um, just getting beaten down by food tokens and like ginger brutes and stuff sitting there. I hope they have like three of them in their hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff, I know that we haven't been playing a ton of Explorer, um, but I actually do Ooh. have a card from the set that I want to talk about in Explorer. Um, I'm going to tell you what the card is, but I want you to guess which deck it's for. Um, which you oh, may have you may have seen this and it's also a card we've already talked about today so uh classic we're just rehashing things um <laughs> but the card in explorer is uh where fox bodyguard so this card is being played in explorer and okay. i just wanted like what's what do you where do you oh. think this card is being played Oh man, I'm trying to remind myself of the Explorer metagame right now. I don't think this is even a deck that you would that not relevant? think about. Yeah. Not that okay. not that it's so out there, but it's a deck that I think you think is not good and you would not consider like Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Mono White is a deck. So if I'm an- if I was answering honestly and I didn't know this is some sort of trick, I would just say that it's gotta be mono white. Okay. So obviously that is a good guess, but the deck that it's being played in is elves because it's an elf fox knight. Oh, actually, you know what? I did know this because I <laughs> I didn't watch the video, but I saw like a, on my YouTube a Jim Davis video yeah. for like rainbow <laughs> so, elves yeah. came up, but I didn't like on it. Oh, ah, so I could have that. I watched his stream <laughs> when he was doing this, and he ran into yeah. a couple different people that were doing the same thing as him. Same thing, um, yeah. <laughs> but like, because it it uh, it fits into Coco. It actually gives you removal, which the elves deck does not get removal because you just can't deal with it. And it doesn't even screw you up because it's actually an elf and it triggers all your other elf things. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it can protect your lords. So it is just this crazy, weird white card. Now, now we're talking about like rainbow elves, mirror matches where the foxes can't exile the other. Exactly. Fox. <laughs> This is what I wanted this card to be. So I was really excited to see that it was actually being played. And it's hilarious that the Were Fox bodyguard is, in fact, also an elf. Um, yeah, I didn't even register that. Like, me neither. I <laughs> had no idea, but I think it's like, yeah, so Fox Knight, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> How is it an elf? Anyways, <laughs> yeah. We oh, don't... because it's a Were Fox. So it's an elf that turns into a fox. There you go. Under the whatever. Yeah. Uh, under the moon or whenever it wants to whatever uh, triggers a fox honestly <laughs> the rules to wear animals is so confusing in the magic universe that i'm not even going to get into it um yeah okay so honestly i haven't played any explorer since the mm-hmm. set came out i've just been loving standard um so i'll give a cop-out answer and uh you know what just for funsies I'm just deciding which one. I'll just choose Restless Cottage, but like yeah. obviously the uh, creature lands are going to be a big part of the Explorer metagame. Don't know the metagame well enough to choose which one. Might even be Restless Fire. Might be. But, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think that's they're definitely great to have into in this set and um, are uh, are super awesome. So. <laughs> Instead, I'll just quickly use the slot to say that uh, I've been talking about how the set's kind of weak or whatever, Mm -hmm. and I think that's just an idea I had when I first read it, Mm -hmm. but now in retrospect, and even at the end of this episode versus the start, like, I still had that mentality at the start, but now just scrolling through the cards, there are so many cards that have had a big impact, not only on standard, but on deeper formats. I think it's probably just not fair to call this a weak set. It's just yeah. like it's weaker than original L Drain, but like, okay, that's like saying this guy's worse than Michael Jordan at basketball, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're not good. Yeah. Um, like, just to name a few cards we didn't even really talk about, like Up the Beanstalk mm-hmm. ripped right. every format in, in half and like mm-hmm. it is broken in older formats and has completely made its way into standard. Um, Definitely didn't pick that when I was yep. scrolling through the the previews, you know. Um, we talked a little bit about Godric, but Godric 
made mono red a real thing again it's just such a good card um and like is going into other archetypes every black deck plays virtue of persistence yeah most white decks play virtue of loyalty mm -hmm. like uh there's just all so many awesome cards in this set and then some sweet potential like you know the, all i want to do is like take you know i talked about i just want there's so much i want to explore i want to take three blind mice and find a way to create a token copy of it so that you just have this like never-ending loop of these things copying themselves <laughs> and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger so <laughs> that's a deck i've wanted to make i'm sure there's a way to make a copy of an enchantment in standard yeah um i want to play an ashiok deck because i realized i read this somewhere that it caught there's a card that's like a three mana tutor and the downside is you have to exile the top 13 cards of your library. And I'm like, right. Okay, so I go get Ashiok with that, and then I'm set to just like ultimate ASAP. Um, that sounds fun. There's just like a lot of cards that have changed the game. There's a lot of mm -hmm. powerful cards that have gone into lists that already existed. And then there's these sweet cards that you could totally build like a, a competitive, if not like not tier one, but competitive room around I'm like yeah all right, well what, what what more am i asking for in terms of power from a set from a it's true land? not to mention the creature lands <laughs> yeah also you didn't even mention that questing druid has been blown yeah. up like legacy i think um questing druid's which... a great call out too that card's just fantastic and probably should be played on standard as well like yeah there's some um cards amazing which i think some people are playing it there's like that exile deck um with uh, some of the aftermath cards so anyway this set is super sweet and i i think i agree with you that i also had it in my mind that the cards were underpowered but you're absolutely right that they're they're not this isn't a weak set even just random shit like troublemaker oof like that's a card i'm gonna play for a long yeah. time <laughs> we haven't even mentioned that decadent dragon is getting played and is good <laughs> like... yeah <laughs> it's like i i thought it would be really good and it's just good yeah um, but it's just all that stuff. Um, ah, magic. Uh, as we wrap up, before really, we go to... Really solid set, yeah. yeah. I, I came in thinking it's a good set, and I'm like, this is a really good set. <laughs> before we go to last call, Jeff, we have one last thing to talk about, which is our favorite art of the set. Um, mm, that's tough. This is always the hardest one. This is always the hardest one, um, especially when we have the enchanting tales, and there's all these different versions of different cards and all this stuff. But I think I'm going to yeah. keep it simple. Um, mm -hmm. The my favorite art from the set um, could have been fun or funny or or whatever. But ultimately, it is um, ego drain. It's the fairy thoughtsies mm -hmm. that was immediately striking to me, and it's very evocative of thoughtsies in that way, with like the the face kind of melting and um, her like arms or like almost branches that are like changing it's this this weird thing and i really like that the colors in the piece uh there's a lot of like white and black and then also she's gold which mm -hmm. is not a color that i would associate with fairies necessarily usually it's purple or blue uh, so it just yeah. stands out in this different way the artist is valera lutfulina um and i think this this piece is just beautiful and i i really like it and still want fairies to be a deck and standard so i'm probably still playing this card <laughs> love it so the one that i was thinking for this um i feel like it doesn't count because i don't know if this is on arena but it if it's not it should be and if it's not it will be but mm -hmm. it's a um a showcase like it's an adventure showcase frame yeah. And what happened was I was scrolling through a deck list. And when you scroll through a deck list on, uh, was it Goldfish? I want to say it was Goldfish, but it usually shows, like, even if you import from Arena, it'll just show whatever card art, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. And this one was Decadent Dragon that we, you were just talking about. And it was the showcase version of it. And I was just like hovering through, you know, all the cards and looking, looking, looking. Yeah. And then I came across this one and I was like, oh, I love that. It's just like, um, it's a little, I don't know how to describe it. It's a little simpler. Mm -hmm. 
um, than a lot of the art we see these days. It reminds me a bit more of what we might see in the past. Mm -hmm. um, although it's clearly a little more like loosey goosey comical rather than menacing in, in yeah. your face. But it's just the the dragon. He's sitting on his hoard of treasure, and he has like neck rings, like all up and down his nice long dragon neck. And he's just like looking in the air, like just so pompous with his uh, with his gold there. And I think it it fits the card frame that style mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. Um, and there's not even like hard lines around everything. It's kind of like that, almost like sketch that I've then. I don't know how to describe this art style, but it's like I've sketched it, and then I've put a lot of detail into the shading and the color and the inside, but the, the black outlines are, are like sketches. Yeah. I think this looked awesome. And I was just like, man, I would play this card if I, it looked like this. Like, like this. Yeah. No. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it has like this Aaron Miller. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. It has a bit of like, almost the background has a watercolor look to it, but right, all, of, yeah. all of the importance is in our dragon and the horde while the background is all just kind of like you were saying the sketches and not no more color or detail were put into them because you're not supposed to look at them um, right there's like it, a you know vaguely some sort of skeleton back there that probably tried mm -hmm. to steal this dragon's treasure yeah there's kind of like a an angel statue thing um yeah yeah very cool i had not seen this one so this is awesome this is definitely on arena that i think but you had to probably play an event to get it Okay, I've never like I don't even know if I played against this card on Arena, but uh, mm -hmm. I'd never seen this art before, and I was just hovering through a deck list. And I was like, "Oh, Beautiful. now I kind of want to import this deck list, see how much gold it costs to uh, get this card." To get that, yeah. Oh. oh, it feels too soon to be done with this set. Um, yeah, we've we've talked about how you know the way they're doing fall sets now, where you go fall into like the ex second fall set not even winter really um right feels a little fast uh as this came out in september our next set comes out in november just don't have nearly enough time but uh anyway we dug in as much as we could for the time we had it and you know we'll probably be going back and look at some of these cards obviously and how they work with the new cards from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, which I'm excited to get into in the following weeks. Um, but I'm glad we yes, had a moment there's... to just say goodbye. Mm -hmm. And it's one of my favorite reasons or things about doing these shows is like sometimes I look back and I I, ha I almost always look back and I had an idea coming into the show of what I thought of the set and then I mm -hmm. actually reflect on it and the idea usually changes at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's like well was the set good <laughs> but tonight it was really like i i liked it and now looking back i'm just like excited for it again mm -hmm. it was a really great set and i'm excited for lost caverns too but i'm just like this set was really good it yeah. was really good it was nice uh but with that jeff it is last call. So the last thing All we right. have to do this episode is rate the beer we are drinking, our Blueberry Sour Velvet Bubble Lord. Um, as always, we rate our beers on a scale from bronze to mythic, just like the tiers in Arena. Uh, however, this has nothing to do with what tier you are in currently or anything to say about tiers. Uh, it's just a fun way to rate beers. So don't feel bad when we say that bronze beers are trash. They're horrible. Uh, you have to pour them out. You can't even finish the can. They are that disgusting. Silver beers are bad um, mm. or just boring. So uh, either one, macro brews will fall into this category or poor, like just poorly executed craft brews. Yeah. Uh, gold beers are fine, but you won't really think about them very often. Yeah. Platinum is solid. You'll drink this again. It's good beer. Yeah. Diamond beers are exceptional. You like these a lot. You buy them and drink them often and you show them to your friends. And Mythic, these are the best of the best. Um, these are the beers that you would recommend to pretty much anyone. And, uh, you know, you just can't stop talking about it. Yeah. So we got our Blueberry Sour Bubble Velvet Bubble Lord. Um, Velvet Bubble Lord. So not nearly as purple as we were thinking. Um, um, already a bronze. 
<laughs> not purple enough. I left myself just a little bit so I could have a little bit of taste before we go into it. I know you finished yours quite a while ago, but yeah. Like the brute force approach. Yeah. Just get it over with. Is that your, your <laughs> idea? Um, though I will have to say, um, this one was interesting, but mm -hmm. I, I was hoping it was gonna be bigger and juicier like flying monkey does flying monkeys like makes crazy in your face smash you over the head beers a lot of the time this one was a lot more like it was definitely sour and there's a little bit of wheat at the end but for the most part it's not something i'll be going back to and i'm not super stoked on it so it was okay yeah, so this caught me by surprise for sure. I was mm -hmm. expecting blueberry sour, like like putting a a war a blueberry warhead in your mouth kind of yeah. thing. Um, it's not that at all. I said it looks like a rosé. Almost could like if if this was like in a rosé bottle. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would. I'd be like, okay interesting but i don't know if i'd be like did somebody pour beer into a rosé bottle yeah you know <laughs> exactly um it's sort of that what well, it's kind of tastes like a fruited wine but there are some beer aspects in there like you mm -hmm. said it's there's definitely wheat um it was not at all what i was expecting mm -hmm. that being said i didn't really like it i think i would say this is gold yeah I agree. This is gold. Um, it wasn't what I was expecting either. Um, but I think for for you, it was like a little bit better than maybe you were expecting. Right, it was like, oh, was... Was like, oh this is closer to what I would want. Um, yeah. And it was, I wanted it to be something crazy and it was much more mild. So when I took the sip, I had to like stare at it for a couple seconds feeling mm -hmm. like it just doesn't, this... it doesn't match what it I thought I was going to get. Let me get um, there. <laughs> just if you're a fan of the podcast flying monkeys is the one who made the 10 percent pumpkin beer we did many ah, yes. years ago <laughs> was that like um, episode three <laughs> yeah so uh that is the brewery we're talking about so they make some crazy intense stuff and so this one just did... basically a flying monkeys on the show zach selected it so <laughs> <laughs> it's true it is it is very true anyway but for me i, I want to like say that that's definitively true there may have been some random thing that i brought but i i don't think so i think i don't think so it's usually it's usually me um yeah. anyway that is what we think about that beer um gold bummer oh well we'll get them next time uh but with that it is closing time so you can always reach us at arena regulars on twitter and instagram yeah you may also find us on arena itself under the username arena regulars podcast if you want to talk to me personally you can find me at zulberg that is z-e-u-l-b-e-r-g on twitter and instagram but jeff where can they find you best place is on our discord channel i go by regular jeff on the discord channel the link for that should be in the show notes mm -hmm. also please please leave us a review on apple Podcasts. follow us on spotify leave us a review there go to youtube uh, give us a comment, a like, and uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, every little bit helps, and all those things are free. So we we love all the support we can possibly get. This has been the Arena Regulars. Reminding you that after you play a magic set, you should take some time to reflect on it. Because this one was better than we thought. Good night. All right, that's fine.